pelvic pain referral patterns or pain referral patterns of the pelvic floor. It's very fascinating to, to kind of learn and understand how some of the pelvic floor muscles can refer and do all kinds of crazy things. We know some of the traditional Travell and Simons pain referral patterns, such as gluteus minimus referring pain down the leg, kind of like sciatica, a rotator cuff muscle referring pain down the arm, the upper trap referring pain and kind of a ram form distribution. But most people don't know all the weird, crazy places that the pelvis can refer pain to. So this really is an interesting discussion when we talk about some of the uh, identified pain referral patterns of the pelvic floor. According to Pastor and Katzman, myofascial trigger points can develop in any of the pelvic floor muscles, and these trigger points usually refer sensation or pain to adjacent sites. These referral patterns do not present in a classic nerve or dermatonal region, although characteristic referral patterns for pelvic myofascial trigger points have been well documented. The perineum, the vagina, urethra, and rectum are common referral sites for the pelvic floor muscles, but women may complain of pain in the abdomen, the back, the thorax, the hip, and the buttocks, and also in the lower leg. According to Bergman's in 2017, trigger points in the pelvis can be found in or near the vagina, the anal rectum, the urethra, the pubic bone, the coccyx, the abdomen, the lower back, and the back side of the thighs. They may also refer pain from those areas back to the pelvic region, making myofascial pelvic pain difficult to localize. Women with myofascial pelvic pain often demonstrate symptoms of, of painful intercourse, dysuria, dysthesia, uh, though these symptoms could also be an expression of other pelvic or pelvic visceral issues. So we're going to look at some of the combined pain referral patterns from ITSA in 2010, Simons, uh, ITSA and colleagues in 2010, Simons and colleagues in, two, in 1999, and then Wise and Anderson in, in 2010. They look at lots of different muscles and then identify pelvic pain referral patterns or identify the associated pain referral patterns for those muscles. The first one we're going to look at is rectus abdominis. Some of the uh, referred pain and resulting symptoms for rectus abdominis include bilateral symptoms across the upper or the lower back, precordial pain, fullness, uh, nausea, and vomiting, urinary urgency, frequency, bladder pain, buttock pain, iliosacral pain, back pain, uh, pain radiating to the prostate area in individuals with uh, male anatomy, pain inside the penis, pain in the lower abdomen, and an overactive detrusor as well. Uh, the rectus abdominis does not get enough love and attention, especially in, in orthopedic practice, but in the pelvic floor world, we know how implicated rectus abdominis is. Rectus, abdom rectus abdominis is a very interesting muscle to needle. Uh, personally, I only needle rectus abdominis under uh, real-time ultrasound guidance, and I only teach rec needling rectus abdominis under real-time ultrasound guidance. Uh, it's, it's, and there are courses that will teach you how to needle rectus abdominis without that, but if you get a real-time ultrasound and if you, if you look at the rectus abdominis directly underneath the rectus abdominis while you're looking at a live feed ultrasound, you see movement. That movement is a peristalsis of the intestines. So if you are not identifying accurate depth with some type of real-time imaging, you don't know if you're going to punch through the peritoneum or not. So I only needle rectus with a real-time ultrasound. Uh, and usually when I demonstrate that, it's always fascinating to see the peristalsis of the, of the intestines uh, moving directly underneath it. And this is so important, uh, very, very important muscle to treat, but it's also just very important to be able to needle it safely. And, and personally, I only feel like we do that with an ultrasound. But fascinating to see all the pain referral patterns right this can do. For the external abdominal oblique, so that can give you heartburn symptoms, groin pain, or genital pain, belly pain, inguinal pain, uh, and also testicular pain in individuals with male anatomy. And it's often a cause of testicular pain that is frequently overlooked. Anytime I'm treating a, a male anatomy individual with uh, testicular pain, always, always include treatment of the uh, external abdominal oblique. Yet another thing that if I'm going to needle it, I'm going to use a real-time ultrasound and we can just go lateral and we can isolate the layers from the external oblique, internal oblique down to the transverse abdominis with our ultrasound and we can easily throw a needle in it that way safely. But if you can't needle that if, and you don't have an ultrasound, then, uh, you know, doing soft tissue work on the abdominals, doing the soft tissue works on the oblique is very important, especially for testicular pain. For the transverse abdominis, groin pain, genital pain, lower quadrant abdominal pain, also belly pain, and also pelvic pain. For the iliopsoas, ipsilateral spine uh, from the thoracic region to the sacroiliac and the upper buttock. Uh, anterior thigh and groin pain, and also inguinal pain is implicated uh, in the iliopsoas pain referral. 
for the quadratus lumborum, uh, SI joint, lower buttock and anterior iliac crest, lower abdomen, the groin and, and greater trochanter pain, belly pain, back pain, and buttock pain are also all implicated with the quadratus lumborum. I'm also a little finicky about quadratus lumborum. Personally, I don't teach quadratus lumborum unless we're doing it again with real-time ultrasound. So we teach that in our ultrasound guided dry needling course. Because the kidney is a significant concern when you're needling quadratus lumborum, the kidney is lo located retroperitoneal, it's deep to the deep to the QL uh, from T11 to L3 and so you can't ascertain appropriate depth and make sure that you don't hit the kidney unless you vis visualize the kidney with ultrasound and then get get out of the way of the kidney uh, so again I, I don't think the QL is a, a safe muscle to needle unless you're using some type of real-time ultrasound although it is an important muscle that's oftentimes implicated in, in this type pain referrals the gluteus maximus of course, we think about just traditional, you know, booty pain for people that have a gluteus maximus pain referral, but look at what else is implicated. So pain local to the buttocks, the superior to the sacrum and inferior to the uppermost ipsilateral posterior thigh, sitting bone pain, perineum pain, uh, iliosacral pain, and then testicular pain and pain in the hamstrings and pain in the sacrum. Again, just like external obliques, the gluteals are, are most always implicated in any type of testicular pain in individuals with male anatomy. For gluteus medius, oftentimes gluteus medius is, is weak on individuals. So pain at the posterior crest of the ipsilateral ilium, the sacrum, the posterior lateral ipsilateral buttock, and the upper thigh. Uh, pain with walking, supine laying, uh, ipsilateral side lying, slump sitting, SI joint or back pain, again testicular pain, uh, pain in the hamstrings, and pain in the sacrum are all implicated with gluteus medius. Gluteus minimus. Pain at the lower lateral buttocks, the lateral thigh, knee into the ankle, and the posterior thigh. Pain with a sit to stand, uh, testicular pain, also again all the gluteals are implicated with testicular pain. Pain in the hamstrings and pain in the sacrum. The traditional Travell and Simons pain referral pattern for gluteus minimus looks just like sciatica and oftentimes is, is misdiagnosed as sciatica and it's just a weak glute men causing a, a pain referral pattern down the back of their posterior thigh. When we talk about the adductors, we just group them all together, the longus, the brevis, the magnus, and the gracilis. So they can all give you deep pelvic pain, groin pain, medial thigh pain, knee and shin pain, and then tenderness in any of the referred pelvic zones or the, any of the referred pain zones are the pelvis. When I'm doing a treatment setup, which you're going to learn later in this course, treatment setups for your genital pain, I always include the adductors along with that just because they, they refer up to the groin and uh, kind of deep into the pelvic pelvic area. When we talk about the hamstrings, so the biceps femoris on the lateral side, semimembranosis, semitendinosis on the medial side. So pain at the lower buttocks, the ischial tuberosity, posterior in the medial, uh, posterior medial or posterior and lateral thigh to posterior knee and the calf. Uh, pain after prolonged sitting or walking, uh, possible sleep disrupts, and then kind of a, a pseudo sciatica type pain as well can all be implicated with the hamstrings. Specifically referring to piriformis, so pain at the sacroiliac region, ipsilateral lateral buttock, posterior ipsilateral hip, proximal two-thirds of the posterior thigh, uh, buttock pain, and then you can actually get the nervy type pain, so leg pain uh, if the sciatic nerve happens to be involved with the, with the piriformis. You know, in, in some uh, cadaver studies, they found the sciatic nerve piercing through the piriformis, uh, so you know, sciatic nerve type pain can also be involved with piriformis. Getting more into the true pelvic floor muscles, so superficial layer muscles for bulbospongiosis and ischiocavernosis uh, include perennial pain, pain at the urogenital structures, painful intercourse, pain with orgasm, cl uh, clitoral pain, pain in the base of the penis and the perineum, and then pain in the ventral aspect of the penis as well if you have a male anatomy. So certainly lots of things are implicated with superficial layer uh, bulbospongiosis and ischiocavernosis. Superficial transverse perennial, uh, there's actually no documented pain referral pattern with the exception of painful intercourse is, is all that these researchers mentioned about superficial transverse perennial muscle. Referring to the anal sphincter, so pain in the posterior pelvic floor, the anus, the rectum, or the pubic region, which that certainly makes sense, uh, burning or tingling in the anus or the rectum, pain before, during, or after a bowel movement as well. So pubococcygeus and puborectalis, some of those pain referrals include pain in the suprapubic region, the urethra, the bladder, the perineum, increased urinary urgency or frequency, painful urination, specifically after intercourse, uh, painful intercourse, 
shooting pain to the tip of the penis if you have male anatomy, and the sensation of fullness and, and pressure in the prostate. It's kind of fascinating to think that a muscle can give you a referral pattern that uh, includes an increase in urinary urgency or frequency. It's just it's kind of kind of fascinating that, that muscles can do that. And then, of course, painful intercourse, painful urination after intercourse, and just like we mentioned, shooting pain to the tip of the penis or a sensation of fullness and pressure in the prostate can all be pubococcygeus and puborectalis. For iliococcygeus, sacrococcygeal, deep vaginal, rectal, perennial, or anal pain, pain before, during, or after a bowel movement, uh, painful intercourse, thrusting pain, so more of that deep, deep pelvic pain with, with uh, intercourse thrusting, pain referred to the perineum and the penis, sensation of a golf ball in the rectum, and then pain during and pain after uh, ejaculation. Obviously a very concerning symptom for male anatomy to individuals. Uh, Ilocoxidius can be implicated. For coccygeus, sacrococcygeal and buttock pain, pain with sitting, pain during a bowel movement, a sensation of intestinal fullness, anal pressure and pain, pain around the coccyx, sensation of a golf ball in the rectum, and then pain inside the gluteus maximus are all implicated with the coccygeus muscle. For pyramidalis, pain in the bladder and the urethra, erectile dysfunction, pain around the pubic bone, pain referred to the SI joint, the buttock, and the hip that increases when you're standing or sitting. And for obturator internus, everything. Uh, vulvar, anal, coccyx, vaginal, posterior thigh pain, urethral pain in women, pain in the entire pelvic floor, sensation of a golf ball in the rectum, generalized pelvic pain that's often burning or apling, aching, it may stimulate a pinched pudendal nerve. A palpation of the area causes a burning and an aching pain because we know the, the orientation of the pudendal nerve there in Alcox Canal and how obturator intern is implicated in that area. But again, like I say, obturator just, you know, almost everywhere. <laughs>